And uh, just waiting for YouTube to connect. And we're off. It is uh, Wednesday, guys. It's December 20th, 2023 AD, or AD 2023 is more proper, I think. And it's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time here in Los Angeles. Gonna have a loosey-goosey week. As I said, loosey-goosey Wednesday show. Have some beautiful music to share with you. That's what I'm most excited about. Oh, Holy Night. Nice. Phil Hahn, Steve Johnson. And, of course, more uh, Sufjan Stevens. But, uh, you know, I want to talk about the Tennessee Tornadoes uh, last week. There was a, or at least one tornado. Some major devastation. Not that I have details on it, but you should be rich. You know, you should be rich. <laughs> I think. Why, if you're so smart, then why aren't you rich? Was a line from Batman. Because these rich boomers are sneaky with their money, according to a push notification that I received. Basically a headline from the Huffington Post. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Some other mess, uh, your calls, guys, if you'd like to call in. Uh, FDR dressed like a girl as a little kid. <laughs> kind of a dumb topic, but it's just odd, inter somewhat interesting to me. I do hope, eventually, to scoff at this article. I have not let it go yet. Climate change propaganda, sustainable Arcadia, climate change initiatives. And some other things, Hague chat, super chats. And, uh, responding to the snake pit chat, maybe? So anyway, everybody, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report, the Hague Report, la la la. So, how you guys doing? I am fine, and I am especially fine because I have my Have an Amazing Christmas t-shirt on. I also have my Get a Job sticker. Teesprings.com slash stores slash get a job. But have an amazing Christmas. Shop the fallen state. Dot creator hyphen spring dot com or rebuilding the man dot com slash stores it may even be on society six I'm not sure maybe not um and you can get yours have an amazing Christmas and it has monkeys Christmas monkeys above and below and it has JLP and it, a depiction of JLP and it looks like it's sort of a sweater material I don't know if you can, you, you want to zoom in on this, Hassan, just for the people to appreciate the texture. This was a design by Lock Your Door, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out to Lock Your Door. It is a, see that material? Oh, see that? It's not material. This is a Lock Your Door. Look at that. It almost looks like a sweater, a sweatshirt, a sweater. You know how they say, oh, ugly Christmas sweaters. Well, this has that. Garish, ugly Christmas sweater uh, pattern look to it. It looks like it's woven a woven sweater, but it's pretty. It's just a print. Isn't that clever? Shout out to Lock Your Door and JLP. And it has Bond logo. Ama have an amazing Christmas. So it's nice. I encourage you to get yours. Get yours. Shop the fallen state dot creator hyphen spring dot com. I know it's gonna come late. It'll come like three weeks after, you, but whatever. Uh, we celebrate, we sh shout out to the Armenians. The Armenians celebrate Christmas on January 6th. Yes, January 6th is a holy holiday. A holy day. 
<laughs> nice. Well, um, kind of like, you know, the insurrection. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, I want to get right to some calls because we're having loosey-goosey hake shows. And so let me get to Joe in Phoenix, Arizona. How you doing, Joe? Thank you for calling. Good morning, James. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. All right. So, Confederate Stasis, you were jabbering on yesterday about it. (laughs) Jabbering, did you say? Let me make an analogy for you. All right. Would you want to pay for and support a statue of Lord Cornwallis here in the U.S.? I'm not sure who that is. He, I mean, was the ma- he was the major general for Britain in the Revolutionary War fighting against our, our independence. A man who was an aristocrat who looked down upon Americans and thought they were, you know, well well beneath him, and there's no way that they should ever be beating England at anything. Yeah. Would you want to pay? Would you want to pay for a statue honoring him? Um, I suppose not. Okay, then. So that's the same exact thing with Confederate statues, James. That's not true. Not, it's not the same exact how, thing. That's a, it's a different situation. How is it different? Because, for one thing, the Confederates are American. And they are... They don't want to be American. They want to be Confederates. Right, but can, what, Confederate States of America. <laughs> so they did want to be American. They didn't want to be... They tried to they didn't leave. Want to be part of, did they not? Right. Yeah, they tried to leave. They, they didn't try to uh, rule over, over us. They wanted to rule over themselves. Self-determination, which is an American principle, last I checked. Regardless, they fought a war, right. they lost, right. and you would, not, you would not want to honor them. Yes, I would. Because they are our, the our brothers, our them. American brothers. They weren't our brothers. We're yes, they are. Them. What, they the southern, the southern, your, southern, your southern compatriots, fellow Americans... They weren't fellow Americans. Yes, they, they wanted were. to turn their back on America. No, they did not. The, America turned their backs on them. No, the they federal turned their back government on turned their backs on them. They turned their backs on one another. They had a disagreement. They fought a war, and Lincoln wanted us to be united. Now you want to divide us again from them, James? They fought a war to keep people in bondage. That's the bottom line. Now you're bringing up slavery. But that was the cause of the war. So what? What's wrong with that? Well, you know, you and I disagree on that. Yeah. You, you, That's you, you right. You can actually uh, you, all you want to. You sound defeated. I'll, I'll, I'll be a decent person and say <laughs> slavery was evil and then discuss it. So. Well, I'll say that the Civil War was more evil than and slavery. You, you've already admitted that you wouldn't want to honor Lord, Lord Cornwallis. That's the same exact thing as honoring a Confederate, Confederate general. Says you. That's not, very, that's not very logical of a statement. It's one hundred percent a perfect analogy. No, you wouldn't it want to pay for you, you wouldn't want to honor that. You're trying we to already, we are, The point is, we already are honoring them. We, they are our no, brothers. Not. Yes, we are. They're well, not, you may not, not our brothers. You may not be. They are not our brothers. Then why did we fight to keep them in the union? And we tried to st- we, stay, we become united to afterwards. Why are you well, so hateful was, of the most, beautiful most South? Mostly about money. Don't try to. Twist things, James. I'm not hateful of the beautiful South. Yeah. South itself can be beautiful. Fighting to I'm talking about the people, the beautiful people of the South. The people who have like, who ha- have some agreement with the Confederates. They didn't have agreements, James. Again, mo- most wars are a rich man's war, but a poor man's fight. Fair enough. The poor people who the, the poor people who who fought who fought the actual battles were not owning slaves. Right. They couldn't care, they couldn't care less about slavery. They were being used for, for an agenda and for economics, sure. like, like, like most wars. I don't take that away from you. They're, they're probably very evil people on, on both sides and very fine people on both sides. We disagree on that. <laughs> there are no fine, fine people fighting to, to preserve slavery. They yes, were there were. Or they were, they were. or they were evil themselves, period. Well, well, says an evil man. So you've, you've already admitted that. You, you, you yourself are an evil man judging other evil people. You're not making a good <laughs> argument. <You're> not <laughs> <laughs> the perfect analogy, you know it is. You admitted to no, it. No, so. I don't admit to that case, being a perfect analogy. Case closed. Case closed. Nuh-uh. Absolutely. Do you want to be and united? Do you want to be united with the South, me. or do you want to be alien? Or do you want to alienate the Southerners? 
Nobody's doing either one of us. You don't think anybody's be alienating the white Southerners? Absolutely not, because, again, white Southerners, the overwhelming majority, do not own slaves. I know, but the, I'm talking about the white Southerners today who like these Confederate monuments, and blacks, by the way, and decent people in general. It, I find it alienating. I find it alienating that they're tearing down these Confederate monuments and disgusting. And they're doing it. You wouldn't want to. You and wouldn't want to order. Yeah. They're doing it. You wouldn't want to wanna honor Cornwallis, and I don't want to honor any Confederate general. You've, ma- you've made that lame, weak point many times. It's not even it a good a point. It's not analogy. a point at all. Perfect analogy. Let's be honest. Like, like Trump's per- perfect call. <laughs> yeah, Trump did have a perfect call. I'm glad you admit that. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't. He got, he got impeached over it. Oh, then your analogy was not in, not perfect, and I find your analogy quite impeachable. But let's be honest: this taking down of the monuments is this taking down of the monuments is to kiss up to black hatred and false resentment over slavery. Nonsense. Not it's nonsense. A, an, what you don't believe that? It's an evolution of of cultural norms and understanding that these are not people who should be honored. They were losers and they were traitors and they shouldn't be honored, period. They were, uh, they may have lost. Many people lose. They were not losers. That's a... They are losers and they were traitors. That's a nasty term and they were not traitors either. They left. It's a descriptive term. Is, is, is secession in the Constitution? There's a... There's a, they allow for it, yes. And did the southern states vote to secede? Of course, state by state, yes. And in every secession, and was that constitutional? Slavery was mentioned, correct or not? I th- I think it was. Was it constitutional? Them, so was it know. constitutional that they voted to secede? Over the right of slavery, I would I would say no. It was not constitutional to secede over slavery. You, so you can that's you my, can decide that's whether my legal opinion. you can. That's your your legal opinion or your personal opinion. My legal opinion. So you can't did vote they, to secede if it's over the slavery. Of the law. Did they follow the, the letter of the law? Yes. Was it? But is that particular issue? I, I would argue no. Oh, okay. So the, by the letter of the law, they were not traitors. No, they were traitors. That's lame. <laughs> that's lame talk. But uh, I understand problem. you got this beef about slavery. Um, you don't even agree with the Bible s- talking about slaves obey your masters and masters treat your slaves well. I'm surprised that you don't b- agree with that. Why are you surprised about that? That's, that's because disgusting. slavery is a fact of life. It's Slave- a fact of life, but it's still evil. There's plenty of evil about it's a fact of life. Okay, but child, in, tra- in the midst, child trafficking is a fact of life. In the mean, midst, it's not evil. In the midst of uh, the facts of life, such as slavery, you should treat one another right. Whether the situation you deem to be evil or not, you should still treat the person uh, well. I think you're nitpicking there. No, I'm not nitpicking. I'm giving you the point, the spirit. I think I'm giving the, the point of that passage in the Bible. My, my point is I think that was men corrupting um, and using that to further subjugate other people. I don't believe that particular passage in the Bible is accurate, and I prefer the Bible to say, not, no, don't mistake your fellow man. How about that, period? How about, uh, what about loving your fellow man? Treating your fellow of man course. the way you would want to be treated? Of course. Not then that's, then that's what, this, that was the, what the passage was, because there were a lot of slaves, and there were a lot of slave masters who were Christians, or believed in God, you know, and they should treat well, one another on well. Anyway, uh, interesting, you, man. You would not want to honor someone who looked down upon you and <clears throat> wanted to keep, basically, England was, at least from an economic standpoint, was keeping America in slavery. Right. So you would not, you would not want to honor someone who looked down upon you and wanted to keep you as a slave, James. It's the same exact thing. But even, analogy. even today, we're, we're supposed to, we Americans look on England as our brothers today, don't we? Don't we consider them I'm our brothers? We don't, we don't call them foreigners. We call them our brothers. We no, that, they are foreigners. They are from a foreign country. I get that, but, th- but they are our brothers because we came from them. The Anglos came to America and founded America. 
And so there are not every no, not everyone, James. There were French who came here. There I know, I know, many, but they, many, but we were under we here. were un, under British rule, by and large. And so we Kenya, fought them. We, under we fought them, British and then rule. we kissed and made up. So we are allies. I don't know if we kissed or made up. Are no. we not allies with uh, England? At times, yes. And we're better than allies with the beautiful southern states and southerners, including, well, the, including the whites who, who love the rebel flag, <laughs> which includes me, by the way. This is the rebel flag. As I've told you a million times, that is, not the, that is not the flag of the Confederacy. Jack. I call it, it the rebel. Not. Is it a rebel flag? It is the flag of the Army of Northern Virginia. That's what it is. Is it okay to call it a rebel, the rebel flag? Well, that's just semantics, but it's not the flag of the Confederacy, period. Then how? Are you, what's your beef? It's, if it's not the flag of the Confederacy, then you're just having a beef over nothing. <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say anything about the flag. I know. Yeah, I said the, yeah you were talking about mind. statues. All right. Uh, I, think we've, I think we've exhausted this topic for, for the moment. <laughs> I, lo I love how the chat says I, I sound like a nice white man. <laughs> just because I'm ed I'm educated and I speak well does not mean I'm not black idiot. Are you you're you're are you half white? What percentage? I don't you don't have to dox it, but if you like, you can share your percentage of white that you are. Well, according to Ancestry DNA, I'm thirty percent um, English and Irish, hey. figure, and two percent Scandinavian. Was that I still can't believe? So the Englishmen are your brothers. <laughs> 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 That's fun, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, do you have ancestry long, long back to America? Are you an ADOS? Descendant yeah, of slavery? I, haven't done, I have not done my family tree yet. My, my brother started it, but we were still in the initial stages of it. So. I think it's BDOS, black descendant of slavery, because it's not African descendant of slavery, right? You know, I can't say one way or the other on that. <laughs> All right, Joe, in Phoenix, Arizona, that was kind of fun. Indeed. All right. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Uh, Mark, I got to get to Mark. It's one two punch. Joe and Mark in California is on the line. Mark, thanks for calling. What's up? Well, a couple of things. First of all, um, in, in regards to the Civil War, um, it was not an attempt to take over the government of the U.S. It was an attempt to secede from the Union. Right. Uh, so in that sense, they can't be called traitors. Exactly. Um, uh, actually, what's going on here, when they try to take away the— con and I want to add this before I go on. Had I lived at the time of the Civil War, I would have been a Confederate. Right. Seeing what we have today in America, oh, yeah, I would have died for the Confederacy. Seeing what the Union brought us. And I'd love to see— Lincoln, a old Abe Lincoln on a New whoa, York whoa, whoa. subway today. Oh, in a New York yeah. subway today. <laughs> oh, I know. No, yeah, I what, to. look, and we're showing. Look what you've done. Yes. Yeah. Look what your victory has spawned. Yeah. Yes, I would. Be, as a I bet you he would be rolling in his grave. Honestly, even if even if he was, you know, evil or communist sympathizer or whatever people say about him, which I don't know. Uh, I bet you he wouldn't be all that pleased. With the oh no, he he! I don't think he'd get out of the subway alive. Yeah. You know, I mean, the New York subway is a hellhole of of the descendants of freed slaves. So you see what um, what it's brought. Yeah, and that's why I bring up that Lincoln analogy quite often. Um, there's one person that's really never been recognized in this country as a war hero and a, and a proud white man. And his name was Rear Admiral John Cromwell. I don't think you've probably ever heard of him. But he was a very effective uh, Southerner uh, from Alabama. He was actually from Georgia. He won a, uh, what do you call it, a, um, the highest medal of honor that they give in the Navy in World War II. He fought the Germans. Okay. And uh, he, he ran for political office on several occasions. But he died a few years ago. He passed away. Okay. He was close to he was close to a hundred. Nineteen ninety six. Nineteen oh two to nineteen ninety six was his lifespan. If I Oh, so you know who Cromwell is. No, I okay. don't. I just searched it on on far left Google slash Wikipedia. John okay, well, he's Gerard Gerard Cromelin. C O R C R O M M E L I N Junior. Yes. Uh, 
I was just, I, I read about him yesterday in the book that I advised you to get. And oh, okay. for me, he is a candidate. I know it's, I wasn't, I was a uh, band when you had your last um, White History Month, but I would have nominated uh, Rear Admiral Cromlin as a true patriot. Yeah. And a man worthy. Well, what I was going to get at, they tried to do that upon his passing down in Alabama. They wanted to put him in some kind of a muse- you know, museum of heroes. Yeah, and we and you know who complained. I'd rather not say the name of the people that complained. Communists, but they basically. Only, communists, you know, dark skinned commies. Okay, and, and he uh, they overruled them though, and Cromlin's in that museum or that Hall of Fame. But that's just uh, I, 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 if this was White History Month, I would have given his name as an honorary uh, white man in American history. Nice, but again, I, I wasn't able to call in, so I couldn't do it. But, um, yeah, the whole thing that I was getting at is what they do, these quote-unquote moderates on race, like the guy that you talk to quite often that was just on, yeah. they want to start with the monument. Start with the flag. I know he didn't say anything about the flag, but believe me, there's an attack on the Confederate flag. Oh, yeah, it's I know the that. battle flag. It's not actually the Confederate. It's the Confederate battle flag. Yeah. So there's a small distinction there. But um, uh, and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's like a, white... it's a eye-catching design. I've liked it since I was a kid. On the General Lee, the uh, Dukes of Hazard car, I had a one oh, in yeah. Hot Wheels. I had a Hot Wheels of it. <laughs> Did you know they took it off the show, uh, Dukes of Hazard, because of the, I don't know if they I don't see they it. They took on the TV show off anymore. the air. I don't see it anymore. It used wow. to be in rerun. You know, but uh, John Schneider, the one guy that was the, one of the actors, yeah, he's a he's a pro-Trump conservative. Oh, nice. He's a good dude. Yeah, right he's on. one of the few. Yeah, one of the few from Hollywood that's uh, got any sense. And you know what's but, funny is John Schneider has acted in, I think, like Tyler Perry TV shows. Interestingly enough, the black, uh, yeah, the black uh, guy who makes movies and TV shows. For yeah, Oprah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> John Schneider. Well, he's got to pay his bills. You know. He's yeah, gotta, yeah. I don't hold that against him. That's. No, not at all. I don't know that much about Tyler Perry, but if he's anything like Spike Lee, then he's worthless as well. He's. But, I don't think. Uh, he, yeah. He, I don't think mm-hmm. he's. He's. He's a mama's boy. <laughs> Who Tyler Perry? Yeah, he's kind of an Oprah type of person. So he's. Well, what's Spike Lee, the ma- macho man? No, I'm just saying that Spike Lee is more into the black thing, and Tyler Perry's sort of a mama spirit, also into the black thing, but he's not. He's. He's not so black activist with his stuff. It's more like um, relationships and dialogue and uh, playing Medea. He plays that black female great grandma or something like that, big mama. But anyway. Right. Yeah, so to get to what I was saying, they're getting rid of the Confederate monuments and they're trying to wipe out history, is what they're doing. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to remember the American flag flew under slavery for, what, 300 years? True. And so are, are well, they they're going to say, well, now we got to get rid of the American flag? Because was there an American flew. flag pre, pre-Declaration uh, of Independence? Because you said 300 years. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in the years, but before the Civil War right. began, and, you know, from, from the inception of America where we, you know, put a flag up there with Betsy Ross, for all those years, whatever the number is, yeah. slavery existed. Yeah, the, so well, at least the forefathers of Americans, yeah. Yeah, well, the forefathers wrote into the Constitution that black people would only be considered three-fifths of a person. So, you know, it is And it wasn't necessarily country. three-fifths of a person. It's just what they counted for representation. Like, they were just saying, oh, we shouldn't be counting slaves, and then some were saying we should be counting slaves as far as the population goes for political power. It wasn't even talking okay. about, it wasn't even really commenting on whether they were people or not. It was just representation. Right. Well, I and agree power. with you, but, yeah. but the way the other side looks at it, no matter what oh, you Oh, we're say, only three-fifths what? human. Just give me a break. Right. We're going to say that no matter what. Yeah. So, so the point is, eventually, the same characters that want to get rid of the Confederate monuments and rename uh, bases and get rid of the flag, these are the same clowns that are eventually going to try to get rid of the American flag and American history as we bleed into one race, which is their goal. Yeah. Mix with the whites, destroy their race, and then their country falls. That's the program. And I don't even think an honest communist 
if you could find one, would would deny that. That's right. their goal. That's their plan. And uh, men, honorable men like John Cromwell and J.B. Stoner, they tried to fight this. You know, they tried to warn us. They were Paul Revere's of their era. But after the courts made their rulings in the late in the sixties, you know, most of the unfortunately most of those men either died, had a change of heart, or went to prison. So, now uh, I'm looking at the chat, and uh, one guy, bald man, fifty four, says Cromlin was racist AF, America first. Racist America, f- well, he was saying racist as blank, but he was very racist, is what he's saying. But Duke oh. in the chat says Cromlin makes everyone today look like toddlers. So he was manly and, according to Baldman54, racist. So what? He was <laughs> yeah. also a war hero that got, I believe, and I, could, I know he at least got one Medal of Honor. He may have actually got two Medals of Honor. That's the highest you could get nice. in the military. And they didn't and just hand those the out back then, necessarily. Pardon me? They didn't just hand those things out, necessarily, like they do today. They just hand out awards to everybody. Well, Medal of Honor, though, you almost have to die to get that. In fact, they give posthumously Medals of Honor to you know patriots who have died saving other soldiers. Yeah. If you read the book I recommended, it'll tell you what he did to earn that. Medal of Honor, what Cromlin did. He's a true hero. And one other thing about Cromlin, the, uh, the, the J-Boys, as I'll call them, they tried everything they could to find dirt on Cromlin, and he was clean as a whistle. Same as President Trump. These evil people that hate Trump, uh. they, 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 they're tr- they try to find dirt on him, and he's clean as a whistle. The same with Cromlin. He was clean as a whistle, and they couldn't get him. Right. They brought down a lot of white leaders with a uh, scandalous report, but they couldn't find anything on Cromlin. So uh, he is a patriot, he's an unsung hero, and that's why I wanted to bring him uh, to your attention today. Now, uh, spoiler alert says there's no Medal of Honor um, mentioned in the Wikipedia page, but I search it on, I search it on the internet and valor.militarytimes.com uh, does say that he got a silver star, and I don't know. Well, if you read the book, it, it documents exactly what okay. he did to earn that Medal yeah. of Honor. All right. So, I mean, Google, you can't trust Google. Uh, they referred to uh, J.B. Stoner as a Nazi, and he was never a National Socialist. Okay. So they will lie with immunity on Google. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he, if you read the book I recommended, he, he could read the, the effort and what he went through for this country. And, yes. uh, you know, he was a good man. I just wanted your audience to know who he was. Uh, I like that one. Well, I don't know, the way you read that uh, letter or whatever that the guy wrote from the bald man or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, that he makes everybody look like a toddler. <laughs> yeah. Is that what he said? Uh, I, that's, what, uh, that's what Duke said in the chat, that he makes everyone look like a toddler today. Oh, he does. He was an honest politician and a clean living man. Everything the left hates. Yeah, that's that true. Was, you know, he was everything. Just like Trump. I know. He's everything yeah, Trump doesn't drink. Hates. Did you know that? He doesn't drink. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't drink or smoke, much yep. like me. Oh, yeah. by the way, speaking of Trump, what did you think of that Colorado Supreme Court? Oh, typical. <laughs> Very typical. That's it's Colorado is run by, a, currently has a gay... Uh, so-called governor, so I'm not surprised. Uh, it may get overturned. I'm not concerned about it. it. At first, I was tempted to get mad. At first, I laughed, scoffed, and then I was, like, tempted to get mad about it. But I'm like, these people are evil. They're the ones mad. We don't need to get mad. Did you see their mugs? It showed them on TV, the, the justices on the co- Oh, uh, yeah, Colorado. I have a picture of the Supreme Court justices in Colorado. Uh, in oh, the folder. A bunch of creeps. Yeah, and a lot of women. Democrats. Well, yep. Yeah, all, Demo- all Democrat appointed, I believe. That means that three of them voted for Trump. It was a four to three decision. Right. It will be overturned by the Supreme Court yeah. because he was never arrested for insurrection and he was never convicted of it. These, right. These left wing extremists run the courts in Colorado. Colorado's got some real serious problems. Yeah. But there are conservatives there, and at one time, it was a red state. They, I think Trump lost it by 14% uh, 
uh, okay. versus Biden. But it doesn't matter because if his name, what what I hope happens is that the other Republicans all take their name off the Colorado uh, primary. Yeah. That would be a good, that would that's show what, unity in our That's party. what Vivek Ramaswamy wanted to do. I saw he posted on X that he wanted to, he's withdrawing from the Colorado uh, presidential primary ballot. And you know what? I heard on from Michael Tracy, who's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, an independent liberal journalist, that you can just write in Trump's name. If you're in Colorado and you're a Republican voter, wants to want to vote in the primary, Republican primary, write in Trump's name. So Yeah, I hope that will work. But even Christie said that he um, didn't think it was right that they would take his, ba- his name off the ballot. Now, he didn't say he was going to withdraw from the primary. Right. And Nikki Haley, the big fraud, the bird brain, <laughs> as Trump aptly calls her, um, hasn't said anything about, you know, whether she's going to stay on. She hasn't even condemned the court yeah. for their evil. So she's the war. I mean, as bad as Christie is, he doesn't have a chance. She's oh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah. None you know, of them but, really but have a chance against Trump. Nope. Yeah. But, but the, the establishment, the rhinos, Fox News, and the rest of them are all for uh, Nikki Haley, and she uh, she took away the Confederate flag. I know. And she calls herself a conservative? That was my introduction to Nikki Haley. She was supposedly governor of South Carolina. Come on, South Carolina. Do better. Vote better, South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, and she took down the beautiful rebel flag from the state capitol uh, grounds. I know. That, that was ridiculous. I, and yeah, I was the mad. other guy... Lindsey Graham, he's a real low life. Oh yeah, he's that's South a, Carolina. Is that South Carolina too? Yep. I can't believe is those Tim two Scott ever got South elected. Carolina. Yeah, he is. Yeah, they have all he's the. What's definitely. wrong with South Carolina? They have all the worst people. <laughs> the worst. Well, I, I think so. a lot of blacks voted for Haley. I uh, mean, you know, that's probably what got her in. Lindsey Graham's just a good con man. He's a great con man. Uh, I wouldn't vote for him if you paid me. Yeah. He was against Trump. Now he's for Trump. He's not to be trusted. He's always pushed for amnesty. John McCain's buddy. Yeah. You know, the other low life. And like Trump said, uh, my war heroes don't get captured when, in referring to right. uh, McCain. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it, man. Take care. Merry God Christmas. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. Look at those people. Thank you, Hassan. Let's get to Josh in Georgia. Uh, Josh in Georgia is on the line. Thank you for holding, man. What's up? Hey, nothing much, man. What's going on? How's it going? I'm having a loosey-goosey hake week. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I, uh, I'm excited for the ladies because there's a women's forum this Thursday, third Thursday of the month. Uh, really? Last, last women's forum. Of the year. Of the year. We had the last men's forum the first Thursday, which was cool. Have you ever been out here? Or just no, only, have you ever only, never only been, ever been to Orlando for the men's conference? I came to the I came to um the first twenty nineteen men's conference. Okay. With uh yeah, with Owen Benjamin. Down in like the and, uh, Radisson Hotel. Tatum. Yeah, down yeah. near LAX. Okay. Yeah. That was my first time I ever met you and uh you know, Joel and Jesse. Nice. And then I came to uh, I came to church one time. Okay. Um, after that, sometime after that. Right on. And then I came to the Orlando uh, thing. But I've never been to a men's conference. Yeah. I've been to one. Oh, you did to do men's. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the only, only oh, you conferences. Mean, oh, you mean men, men's, men's forum, the monthly men's forum. Forum. Yeah. 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 Only men's forum. But yeah, I've been to both men's conferences. Right. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, you remember I called you like a, about a year ago and I asked you like, I, I was thinking about moving to LA. Oh just, yeah. Uh, coming, <laughs> oh coming yeah. Down. And I said, don't change your situation. Don't do like a drastic right. change of your situation. You're right. Because that, your, that was your situa- good, uh, yeah, your situation is not your problem. It's the inner. Right. Yeah. Exactly. As exactly. the Bible, the Bible even says. Each man sh- should uh, remain in the position he's in. Um, if you're a slave, don't let it bother you. If you can get your freedom, do so. But uh, thrive right. where you are. Right. Nice. Interesting, man. And that's that's that kind of ties into what I was calling about. Because, like, I think 
the slavery that I have is my, I think it's my addiction to, to learn stuff and uh. intellectualize stuff, which gives me a, um, Oh yeah. I, that's identity. true. <laughs> yeah. That's like, true. You know, yeah. Like this, <laughs> right. What we were talking about in church, you, you was at church last Sunday, right? Where yep. the, yeah. Where that lady, um, had asked about, I mean, she, she had gave like the perfect answer. I had thought that was the exact, that's exactly what I would have said if I was there. That's funny. Right. And so, uh, the answer to the biblical question of, uh, of what was the it, biblical uh, question last week? Um, I straight up forgot. Is it, uh, miserable, uh, not miserable, um, uh, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Yeah. Somebody but, knows, but it, it just reminded me of like how that's what, that's what, School is the real, that's the true purpose of kindergarten through 12th grade. And do you college. worship yourself? Do you worship yourself? Yeah, I checked the, right. I checked my notes because <laughs> I have That's them. right. That's right. But, um. And she's yeah, all, I think, no, I don't worship myself because there is no me. And if I'm, that's the right. devil and stuff, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> shout, <laughs> out to, shout out to Roche. That was, that was yeah, funny. and it's like, I mean, I would have. I guess, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't understand that all the way, but it, it makes sense. It's, uh, it's it, like, it makes sense what? What makes sense? You don't understand what? It, I don't understand the, the concept that there isn't a me, but I, I do see that I, I do things that I don't want to do that I can't control, you know, like what Paul said, right? Yeah. So, you know, and I see that with other people as well. And everyone, everyone has that and they hide it. There's something in your life that you do as like a small, like, like I can, I think a vice of mine is like reading Wikipedia, <laughs> and getting a little higher from it, getting That's knowledge, funny. getting information, you know, feeling yeah. like you know something, you know? Right. And it's like, um, yeah, that, that, um. That reminds me, I used I, to read Calvin and Hobbes, the comic strip by Bill Watterson, yep. and Calvin had quite the vocabulary. This six-year-old blonde rascal boy uh, had right. interesting vocabulary and sometimes misused words, and I would have, a, have the Bill Watterson book of Calvin and Hobbes anthology thing in, in one hand, and then I'd read the dictionary to look up the words that they were using. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, really? So it was, I found that too, intellectual, as a kid, you know, like sixth grade or whatever. Yeah. yeah I, I found it intellectually I used to read stimulating. those too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. And it, it, it's like, that's, it's it's kind of like, I called you last week about being grammatically correct. Right. Where it's actually, yeah, where it's actually like a, um, it, it, it's a, it's a flaw. It's a vice. Yeah. You know, or it's an ego thing. But, um. It seems, I mean, we're trained to do that, you know? Yeah. We, we're tra- I tried all my life to get straight A's, and I could never do it in school, you know? Right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, um, the, good. About the, the about the is no me thing? Yeah. You'll notice that selfishness is not godly. God didn't put selfishness in you. Really? I don't think so. Is what what is see that's that's kind of confusing. I don't even know what selfishness is. Like, like what's you, the Do you know do you have you ever been selfish? You know I'm not sure cuz it's like <laughs> what what is the selfish thing? What is the selfish thing? Like, that some that somebody could do. Yeah, well, I mean like yeah, how would you Using a woman for the S word. Oh, okay. That's selfish. Okay, right, right. Oh, it Okay. You see, it, all, the, all, the, all that, all those good feelings and all that stuff, that's selfish. Right. Pretty, right. Much, pretty much everything we do is selfish, I think. Seems like. Right. Okay. That's true. And that's and not God. That's, God didn't, that, so that, that self that we're ish for <laughs> is not us. Uh-huh. Is not the real it, us. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like you don't have a choice. 
but especially in the black community, like it's kind of like you, we are you, 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 you are with the black culture. You are, um, you're gonna, if you're raised in the black culture, you're gonna, um, use a woman for that. I know, you know? that's wild. Even like, the Christians are like, I'm human, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's so funny. Exactly, which you know, you can't. I, I get that, but if you have that mindset, you're not you're not going to be able to help it because you believe that thought that I'm human, I can't help it. You've given yourself right. the excuse, and you have yeah. you have a mindset that traps you in. It is that's true. Where, whereas and, um, I haven't done that. Go ahead. So it's possible right. not to do that. <laughs> right, I, and, you, and and right, and I I get that people I, replace I, the, I get that people replace the the thing desires with other things, and they they go yep. to. You know, I get, I get that. I get that you right, can't help but I, be uh, selfish. Good. Let's say you can't help but be selfish, right. but you don't have, you don't have to do these things, even in your fallen state. I think, I don't know. You know, right? But right. everybody has and their issues. Like, and, but the thing everyone. is, but the thing is, the setup is the culture around you encourages right. these things, and right. you know, the today's society makes some things very easy. And convenient to get into, and get away with, with without shame. So, because th- yeah, the women have gotten rid of the shame in culture, where uh, which yeah. is the wrong way to get rid of shame. There's a godly way to get rid of shame, and then there's a satanic way of getting rid of shame. And we're doing it in the satanic way, right? <laughs> but you know, would, would you say? Let me ask you this: Would you say using a woman to feel good? is any worse or less than reading Wikipedia or reading the Bible to feel good? Uh, would, you say would you say that's worse than... Potentially, that, yeah. potentially it can be more destructive on, on, like a, on like a level if you have a kid or you uh, get her to uh-huh. get an abortion or you're using her up. Uh, it, like you, can, <laughs> right. you can say that. You can kind of say that, but that's only on like a the physical world level. It's right. spiritually... You're, Evil is evil. You shouldn't even really bother comparing. I think because that's how I am with my vices. Like I, I, I can force myself. I haven't been, I haven't dated in a long, in about three or four, three four years, or been with a woman in that long as well. Yeah. But I see my other vices coming up, popping up to replace it. Like, like being overly knowledgeable, working out too, being too OCD about. Um, working out and eating right and getting a good feeling from that. Yeah. Instead of, um, so I guess in, in the spiritual realm, that's, um, I guess that's how you become a black Israelite or a flat earther, you know? It's like... I know, huh? <laughs> it can play tricks on you because you think, I'm a good person. I'm not smoking. I'm not doing cocaine. I'm not drinking. I'm not chasing women. But now the other vices pop up on me and it's like I don't think they're, they're just as high I can't control it you know it's selfish to um, to learn things to get high off of just learning learning yeah know? yeah uh, yep. I think so. that's maybe that's why um, being present is so important because you just yeah. you kind of just get lost in your in the bad habits or whatever yeah, and I mean it's oh yeah, oh, being present, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. So it's it's I I I want to get to the point where um, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that's about right. But um, yeah, I, I think if I well let me tell you this, if I if I had a kid, I think the best way to raise it would be to not teach it anything. <laughs> You might be right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, you like, might be like, right. Uh, just let them look at you. Just let them watch you work. You know, make them work. You know, make them do that. But never send them to school. Never forcefully homeschool anything on them, you know? You, never, never. Uh, I, I liked your point that you made at the beginning that you're a slave to learning and the intellect. Because every time you right. call in, it's, it's, um, it's citing this thing that you've learned about it's not me i can't help it and but and right. so it's not really me and yes 
it does do this. <laughs> it's a uh, right. It's that's all intellectual. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, 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 it's every, like every I, practically every part I, of me is like that. <laughs> I know. I know. It, maybe it's something I can't explain with words. It's like if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it. Maybe. That's really? What the, that's it. The that's what I learned in school one time. The more you the more you talk, the less yeah. you sound like you know what you're talking about. The more you write, the less yeah. you you know. I, I can't admit that I definitely talk too much. And I, uh-huh. I you know, I, I probably I'm probably doing it right now. I probably get my high off of just calling in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just this could be a vice for me right here, you know. Yeah. So Terrible. I guess yeah. Interesting, man. Well, shout out to the truckers. You're a trucker, right? Not to dox yeah, the man, profession. Yeah, man, I'm at a shipper right now in, in PA, nice. waiting to get loaded. America yeah. moves by truck, as one of my other no. trucker callers has said. No, yeah, I know it does, but it's, it's <laughs> over, man. The trucking industry is it's, it's, um, it's controlled completely by the government. Oh, it's wow. Not, yeah, I wouldn't. Um, the trucks are, like, girly. They're, they're designed not to last. Uh, and they've made it to where you can't, it ain't worth it to own your own truck. It's worth it to just work for a company that's controlled by the DOT mm. completely. Yeah. Wow. So I, yeah. And I think it, it's better to to um, get with like a um, a local um, supply chain. Okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm a long haul guy, so I go from all coast to coast. But um, And you go all the way into th- California? Rarely, okay. very rarely. Because California, yeah, they hate, California hates. What are you? What are you about to say? Go ahead. Yeah, they, yeah, they. Well, I don't. I think it's. Um, what were you about to say about California? I thought you said you, they hate, <laughs> and I jumped. I don't, in, yeah, I don't know that it's that they. It's that they hate truckers. It's just that um, the company I knows that it's not trucker friendly yeah. at all, and it's it's only guys from California can operate there well. Like long haul guys like me, I don't do well in like weird states. Like New Jersey is the same way. New Jersey. Oh yeah, I believe um, that. In NYC. Yeah. New Jersey is California it's, Junior. Right. It's for local drivers. It's better for it's way better and that and that's that's um I don't know. Wow. It's weird. But it's a job. I just I don't see myself right. as a trucker. It just pays it's a job. Yeah. It ends, it, it many, tomorrow and I'm cool. The yeah. truckers seem to be Kind of decent, uh, a decent bunch because there's a lot of truckers who listen to JLP and Hake and call in. Yeah, some of them call in. Yep, exactly. That's, and I, that's I, what I makes never it... knew there were so many black truckers. Yeah, it's a girly job now, man. <laughs> a, a grandma could do this. Job. It's not a manly job anymore. Uh, nice. They've made it to where women can do it, and yeah. that's what they want. They that's want funny. to weaken the men, and they, they don't. They don't make it. Um, they made everything girly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, That's Josh in Georgia. Country. It's great okay, to hear from no you. Okay, no problem. Merry hey, Christmas, I love man. the show, man. Appreciate Merry Christmas to you too, bro. All Thanks, right. man. Yep. Bye. 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 Bill's a first-time caller from Chicago, Chi Town. I used to call it Chi Town, Chi Town, Il- uh, Illinois. What's up, Bill? Thanks for calling. Oh, hi. Yeah, I was just watching you on uh, Twitch and. Right on, man. I'm on Twitch. The Hake Report. Thanks for calling. Yeah. You had some people talking about how white race is superior and they shouldn't mix with other races. Are you okay with that, or do you enable that kind of talk? Or I enable freedom of speech. I don't hear anybody say that the white race is superior. Maybe maybe they said that, but well, about not not mixing whites are becoming a minority in their own they countries. Are? Yeah, is and, that a, is that bad? Yeah, that's a bad thing. Why? Because whites uh, made the country, and they have the country's values, by and, by and large, you know, how exceptions they make, to the rules. How did whites make the country? Whites made America. How? And they made, uh, by how? founding it. By founding it, fighting for it. It was there before anybody founded it, wasn't it? Right, but it wasn't the, it wasn't the country that whites created. So what it wasn't about the, the soci- It wasn't the country and the society and the thriving... What about the Chinese railroad workers? What about them? They didn't help? They helped. Whites, whites hired them. So, but they're not white. 
so, but they weren't they weren't the ones who had the sense to make the railroads. Whites designed the railroads and the had the Chinese to do make it. it. How could you make a railroad without having the sense to make one? Because they're they follow the instructions of the whites. So the whites are smarter. In this case, they hired the people to work for them. I don't know if Is they're that smarter. A yes or no to my question. Maybe. Maybe. Why? Yeah. Why? I don't know. They just they just happen to be smarter in well, many why ways. Why did you say yes if you if you said I don't know? I asked you and you said yes, and then I asked you why, and you said you don't know why. Because you're you're kind of antagonistically peppering me with with questions, kind of confrontationally about uh, the Chinese built the built. Uh, worked on building the railroads, but somebody had to design yeah. them. And so you're saying, oh, what, you know, the Chinese are not smarter? How do you know they didn't design them? How do I know that the Chinese workers who built the railroads didn't design them? Yeah. It's pretty much common sense. You, are you not aware of that? Wait, wait, wait. That does, that's not an answer. Shows, yes, it is. I mean, you need to it's, well, it how? is an answer. Common pretty much how? common Why sense. common sense? Are you pretending like you think the Chinese workers designed the railroads? Well, I mean, who did? If they didn't, who did? The Americans. And how do you know they were white? By and what large, white, white Anglo-Americans built race? America. So do you think, I mean, you, you don't think that the You Chinese don't think it's a bad thing that whites, do you, don't think, you don't think it's a bad thing whites are losing their countries? How are they losing the country? Because other people who don't have the values that made the country great are coming in and taking over with false values with phony communist values. What's an example of a false value? Anti-racism. What does that mean? What's anti How is anti-racism false? Because racism isn't even real. It's only used against Not the whites for being normal. It's normal to value your, your people and your nation. And it's abnormal not to have, uh, to fight against that and pretend like the whites are bad guys when everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing what? Everybody else is doing what is being so-called, quote-unquote, racist, but the whites are... Like what? Give examples. Favoring themselves, favoring their own nation. Give examples. Blacks are favoring their fellow black man and woman. They're pretending is like they... Is bad to favor black people? No, I mean, it's not, and it's not bad to favor the whites. It's not bad for the whites to favor the whites. I'm saying it's normal, it's normal to be what you call racist. But it's because it's not racist. It, it's just you don't know what I mean. it's just normal. What do I call racist? I haven't I haven't told you what I call racist yet. Because you said uh, you said people are saying whites are superior, like and whites. Yeah, nobody said are. whites. Do you agree nobody with that? nobody said that whites are superior. They're superior at some things. The guy in your chat did. Uh, I don't know that. I'm not watching my chat that closely. I have I have do several you agree streams. With that? I'm asking you if you agree with that or not. On certain levels, people some what whites level? whites are better at. Then uh, whites are better than the other races at building America because they built America, for example. Building America. Yeah. That's like such a broad term. And it's I know. Over centuries. It is so a broad how, term. Give, give me an example. Building America. They created America. What does that mean? That founding that America. Mean the, founding, the founding of America was, is one example. Uh -huh. I Aha. Mean, that, Do you so agree vague. with that? Do you agree with that? No. No. Founding of America is vague for, to you? Yeah. What does so that you, mean? Don't, you don't know what it means to found America? The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution? Okay. And what about them? I mean, how does that happen? Those were made by the whites. Now? Those were made by some whites. And some whites didn't okay. agree with it. But were it was made by the whites and it's. Bad? What's that? Were the ones that didn't agree with it bad? No, not necessarily. They may have been good. They may have been very good. Okay, so you're, are you, I'm just trying to figure out if you agree that whites are superior. I said on some levels, in some ways, whites are superior at some things. Some whites are superior. Many whites are superior to others, other races at some things, like by what? and large. Don't say founding America. Give me something like, you know, solid and real, with, as specific as you can. I'm not even into this topic. Why are you, why are you scared of this topic? Why I'm are you mad scared. about this topic? Well, I, can talk about, I can talk about this if you want. I'm not scared. I'm not going anywhere. No, you're mad about this topic. I'm not mad. I'm just curious about 
I'm just because you act like I shouldn't. You, you, you act like I shouldn't let people speak their minds in the chat. No, you can let people. I never said that. I'm asking you. You asked why do you why do you people. allow people to to be racist in your chat? Yeah, why? See, you just said you just cried racism. I didn't cry racist. I yeah, asked you, you did. why you allow that. You said, why, why do you, you allow, allow people that? to be racist in the chat? I don't even believe right, in the why? racism thing. So why do you allow others? Because racism doesn't exist. Well, why do you allow people talk like that if it doesn't exist? I mean, Talking like that isn't racist. Oh, well then what is it? It's their opinion on the world. So saying that whites are superior is not racist? No, it's not racist. Is saying blacks are superior racist? Nope. Okay, why blacks not? Have, blacks why have you... different things that they're superior at. What? Mm, athletics, uh, entertain, rap, by and large. <laughs> Entertainment. They're very entertaining. So blacks are entertaining? Oh, yeah. You don't think there's blacks that are smart enough to do anything else besides entertain you? I didn't say that. What, Why would you, me, me, do you assume, do you assume that I meant that? Nope, I'm asking you, that's all. I just, I can't understand what you're saying unless you clarify it. I need to clarify blacks are entertaining? Yeah, what does that mean? That they, when they talk, it's in a stylish when way talk, that captures all, your all attention. black people? No. Okay, so why did you say that then? Many, most, many. Most and a many. A remarkable, a, a remarkable amount of blacks are quite entertaining. They call, they call my show. That they just have a stylish way of being. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into. I'm not into like a genetic argument or anything. I'm just into just seeing. I'm just color. into seeing how things genetic? are. Is skin color genetic? Part of it, yeah. I think so. So then, well, you're, you're separating people between their skin color. Though, so does it's Mother genetic. Nature, and nature is God. So you, you you don't think white people should have kids with people of other other skin colors? I wouldn't I wouldn't encourage it. Why? Because why would you encourage something like that? Because it actually it uh, the gene pool is better when people that come from different parts of the, of the and different uh, strains of, of humanity mix, then the, the the children are are much stronger. That sounds like propaganda. I don't know if that's true. But you never heard that before. So you're I've heard it. Immediately labeling as propaganda. I've heard it before. You're why making an assumption that I've never heard that before. Why is it a pro- why is it propaganda? Because it's pro uh, mixing out the races, especially the whites. Okay, so this whole racism thing people, is is against the whites. Have you noticed that the racism thing is used against the whites and no other race? By and large, I don't know what that means. That's too vague. It's too vague. Yeah. Whites are called racist. Nobody else is called racist, by and large. This guy asked, he said, I guess he's talking about me in your chat. He said, he's a snake. Is he Jewish? Is that, is that humor? I don't think that that's humor. You, you are so a why snake. Why do you let people do that? I mean, you, you, just, you just... You are you a don't snake. Are you, do. you don't know you're a snake? Why am I a snake? Because you're into... You're a very judgmental person. We're all judgmental. You judge yeah, we're all snakes. Right. Okay. But you don't. So but you you're. De- are you denying that you're a snake? I'm not a snake. No, I'm a human being. I know, but you're a human being who who slithers around like a snake trying to bite somebody. No, well, now you're just attacking me personally. No, that's a per- That's a description. No, you're attack. You know, you're. you're- you ever play hockey or basketball? You get a foul when you, you don't play the ball. You play the you play the person. That's what you're doing right now. You're just now now you're just resorting to personal attacks. No, I'm descri- I'm justifying the person's. You brought it up. You brought up. Yeah, I did. Caller, uh, Radulazer in the Twitch chat said he's a snake. Is he Jewish? And yeah. uh, you said you wanted me to. Is that funny? Do- Is that entertainment? It, I don't know if he's trying to be funny. I didn't. I didn't think of that. And Radulazer, I don't, think, I don't think that he's black. I don't know if he's black or not. But I didn't say black. I was you said entertainment. Talking so. about someone being Jewish is, is funny as a joke. First, you say there's a snake. And then you why are you, why are you assuming that he's trying to joke? So he was serious. He may have been serious. He may have been joking. I don't know. But you sound you're yeah. kind of crazy at me. Well, it just seems like all entertainment to you. I, I don't think you take any of this seriously. Well, that's an assumption. 
Well, words words have meanings. I mean, if if I was to marry someone and I had a child and that my wife wasn't white, would are my you, child some would be something wrong with them? Are you white? Yeah. Are you Jewish or no? What difference does that make? I'm no, just I'm curious. Not, why, asked, why would you ask me? Because he he asked if you're Jewish, so I asked if you're Jewish. Would that make Would that make any difference? No, not to me. Okay. It so just, but a lot of Jewish question, people are liberals. A lot a kid, of normal whites are Christians. If I had a kid with a non-white, would, would my kid somehow be, be not as good as pure white kids? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how your kid would turn out. Your, turn, your kid would turn out a little bit like you and a, and a lot a bit like your mother, the, the mother. Why a lot? Oh, you mean just genetically? Okay. No, I mean, but because... Is that you, well, maybe, yeah, genetically too. That's right. If the non-whites have more dominant genes, I guess. But uh, I was talking about spiritually, because you have this sort of... Oh, we want to talk about You have this sort of effeminate that? spirit, like, uh, like a liberal. You, are you a liberal? No. You're not liberal? Are you a communist? No. Are you socialist? No. Are you... Uh, what is this? I'm not sure what any of this has to do with my question. Because you're talking like a liberal. What? How do liberals talk? Don't say like you. Give me an example. How do liberals talk? Effeminate. Believing in the racism thing. You think I'm effeminate now? Yeah. Why? Because you're uh, very sharp. Like a scary mother. Now you're just attacking me again. You're just making... No, I'm describing you. You asked me why you sound like a liberal and effeminate. Yeah, but those those are just... You asked me. you're You're just going... Now you're just attacking. You're doing it again. You're just attacking my character calling me liberal and effeminate, like somehow that's supposed to be negative. I'm just asking you why you think that people that would have a white person marrying and having children is bad with someone that isn't white. And you still I didn't say it's bad. I said I wouldn't encourage it. Why? That's bad. How could you not encourage something if it's bad or if it's good, rather? I didn't say it was good. So then what is it? It's not something to be encouraged. Why? Because whites are becoming a minority. Like, you, why would you? Why would you want to mix and get away from your race unless you had a get away a, from my race? Yeah. Why would you want to get away from what your parents are, and marry somebody outside of your race, uh, unless you had some type of perversion or hang up against your parents? Well, now I'm perverted because I marry somebody who isn't white. Perversion. Most Where people. Most from? people who marry or who have the S word sex, are perverted. And on top of that, having how did get, you get, come to life? Getting through s- the sex word through <laughs> perversion. It, I don't know what my parents, what their parent, my parents' mindset was. I can't comment on that. Why are we talking? To, I don't. I have no. You're you brought it up. You movie. brought up the race mixing thing. Yeah. No, you did. No, I didn't. You called in talking about the race mixing thing. You you enable that. You allow people to talk like that. Right. Really. Now you're justifying. And I'm enabling. And I'm that. enabling a liberal to talk. And be all now you're judging. calling me names again. I told you, you I wasn't liberal, but you're, now you're calling me one. Is, is that a bad thing to be a liberal? Well, it's just, for you it is, yes. It's a derogatory term. Feminist, liberal, it's, there, there are all these derogatory terms. I didn't terms call you feminist. You I call you effeminate. Whatever. Okay, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's, it's some kind of like, as opposed to just talking to me like a person, you're calling me names. You notice I'm not doing that to you? I do notice you're not doing that to me. You, but right, you're so being, we, but, like, are, are you that? being evil you towards me? That? Are you judging me? No. You're not judging me? I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand what it is, what, why you think that somehow being not white is bad and it's destroying something. You, you're lacking patience with me. How? I'm listening to everything you're saying. No, you're, when, I give a, when I give an answer, you jump in with an Yeah, well, I'm going to critique question. your answer for sure. You haven't, given me, you haven't given me any critiques. Okay, so tell me again, what am I missing? How is that bad? How is what bad? Having a child, me being white and having a child with someone who isn't. I didn't say it was bad. It could be bad. You said it's destroying. How is it destructive? Because the, the whites are already a minority. And so how is that bad? How is, being, how is whites being a minority bad? It's, just, it's destructive to the, to the whites. How? You say the what, I'm asking the how. How? You because you're breeding, out, you're breeding out the whites. 
How is that bad? I didn't say it was bad. I said it was destructive. What is it? How is it? Dis- okay, so how are destructive and bad not? <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> how can they be different? Destructive is not always bad. You should destroy some things, but you shouldn't destroy the whites. What do we need to destroy? You should destroy the lie of racism. It's a lie. There's no okay, such so thing as racism. How does having non-white kids destroy anything? That's what I'm trying to understand. It destroys the white genetics. Uh, how? Because you're breeding out the whites. And how is that bad? How is that destructive? It's breeding out the whites. That's destroying the, how the white. How is that destructive? It's destroying the white population. And how is that destructive? I just just told you what it is. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, well, tell me again. I didn't get it. The whites are becoming a minority. That's that's not destructive. And how is that destructive? You don't answer. Because you're breeding out. Is extinction destruction? You think white people will be extinct someday? I don't know. But is it destruction? Would that be a bad thing? Is it destruction? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. How? How? How what? How is it destructive? I just told you, man. No, you're, you're just going in circles. You don't tell me exactly how or how it's bad. You, you know, you never I didn't say it was bad. I said that you're getting away from, you're going away from your parents. It's oftentimes perverted. It's, it's like, uh... Going away from your parents. Right. So what? Most parents don't want their children to date somebody or marry somebody outside of their race. How do you know this? Are you saying you don't know that? No. I've never heard anybody ever tell me that, but you have. Who is telling you this? Wow. I've seen it in, in every race. I've seen it in every race. You don't get out How? much. How would you know that? Have you interviewed people? I mean, have you interviewed parents? How do you know this? I've heard them talk. I've heard what, what, stories. Who, who's them? Be specific. Who people. Have you, who have you people, heard who've, people who've dated outside the race. Parents of people who've dated outside the race. Parents who don't want their race, uh, don't, want to, uh, don't want their children to date outside the race. This you is want so that? common. If your, kids, if your kids do that. Are, are you, you pretending gonna, that this is not gonna, reality? What are you going to do if your kids don't uh, date and marry a white person? I have no it? idea, man. But what, are you pretending that this is not reality? It's, it's ignorant is what I think it is. So the, the Asians and the blacks and the Hispanics, although Hispanics are already mixed, um, and the whites. How are the Hispanics already mixed? Because they're mixed with Spaniards and American Indian. So the, uh, the Hispanics whom I'm referring to. Now, okay, so the they? Asians. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 what, you, you hold on. To? You hold on. The Asians who don't want, the Chinese, for example, who don't want their children dating in Indonesian or a black or a white, they're ignorant, the parents? Yeah, that's, that's ignorant. So the parents are ignorant for wanting yeah. their children to date somebody in their, who, who, a fellow countryman. Well, you said countrymen. We're talking, now we're talking race. Race and country are totally, completely mutually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive? Well, I mean, a, a Muslim American is as much American as you are. It says you. You think, they're, you think they're not. You think they're inferior just because of their religion? You think they're less American because of their religion? I didn't say inferior. I, you well, what said, are you saying? Tell me what you're saying. I'm saying that a, a Muslim who's an American... Uh, may love white people, may love Christians, and may value uh, the Second Amendment and the First Amendment and all those things. But most Muslims in America are not like that. They don't love whites. How do you know this? Because, they, know this? because they vote Democrat. Are you kidding me? What does voting Democrat have to do with it? Democrats don't love uh, whites. They don't love Christians. Why not? How do you know this? Look at their policies. Okay, give me an example. Anti-racism. What policy? Anti-racism. What is that? Anti-white. They hate whites. Anti-racism equals anti-white? Yeah. It means a hatred for whites. So Democrats have a hatred for whites? Yes. Okay, tell me, I need specifics on this. Who, who said that? I said that. You're not a Democrat. What? I want to hear... I want to hear a Demo- I want to hear how you know what Democrats think that, or how do all Democrats think that? 
do all do all Democratic politicians and people who vote them Democratic? There may be how, some. How you, there may be some who. Politics? There may be some who don't. Uh, don't hate whites. There may be some out there who don't hate whites. There, but they won't be Democrats for long if they don't hate whites. So you think Democrats hate whites? Yeah, I know that they hate whites, How and most and most of the Republicans do. Oh, so okay. So Republicans and Democrats hate whites. Right. Hmm. And you can't provide. How old are you, Bill? Policy. I'm thirty-two. Thirty-two. Uh. How did you find my Twitch stream? I was just going through and I saw you, you broadcasting. Nice. Just today? Yeah. Right on, man. Well, Merry Christmas to you. What's your, what's your critique, in short? Critique of what? Of, of my show at this point. I think you shouldn't enable racists. You shouldn't allow people to come in here and start talking trash about Jews and blacks and Mexicans and all that. It's just, it's ignorant. You should, you should stop that. People that talk like that, Why? they eventually wind up for some excuse to go out and start hurting people physically. That's not true. Of that kind of talk. That's not true. Of course it's true. No, it isn't. You don't, you don't think people that, that hate, that, that, you know, dislike or hate people based on their religion or their color or where they're from. There's a lot of people out there who have nothing better to do a lot of free time, and all they want to do is give an excuse or find an excuse to go destroy like a church or a mosque or go firebomb or go just like beat up people because they look differently. It's happening all the time. You fell, you fell for the anti-white propaganda. Most of the whites are not There's no anything right. I like can that. give you specific examples right. if you want. I know that. I can go right down the list where people are, are ganging up on other you people. Can find a handful of, you can hand, you find a handful of, of whites doing that, but you're saying that the, the, find a handful. the people I can in find my... thousands of instances. I know, there's, I can find there's a big population. Of of that. It's a big population. There you can find a, many more attacks on whites by, uh, no, by blacks, for example. It's just as ignorant. It's just as ignorant. It's just as right, bad. So, It's destructive, and it, it goes against everything that Jesus ever taught. Are you a Christian? I don't have to be to know that. I know what Jesus said. Are you, but you're not, a, so you're not a Christian? It doesn't matter or if I'm a Christian? Christian or not, okay? Why are you bringing Jesus up Jesus? Love, love, forgiveness, being kind to others, and helping people. He never said anything about how whites are superior or that America is superior or any of that garbage. Neither did I. The heck? You do. No, you I did. You say it all the time. That's the basis. That's the entire basis of your narrative. You just right found now. my show today. Well, you don't know anything yeah, I about know. it. It took me five minutes to figure it out. I know, I know, I know exactly where you're Do going. you know yourself this well? As you pretend like you know me? I don't know you personally, but I know what you say. I, I, I do you know your kind of Do you words. know yourself this well? As you pretend to know my show, I know it took me five minutes to figure out your show. Have you figured out yourself? Oh no, that's an ongoing thing. Nobody, nobody has. Anybody that thinks they have is they're just insecure. No, of course not. Then how are you f so sure about my about my the basis of my show and my chat? Is the words you say, the things that you that the things that you tell others that you know this whole. Whites are a minority, and it's destructive to breed with other races. That's just ignorance. It's, it's bad. There's nothing good but about it. But it's not ignorance, and, and I didn't say that. It's it, total ignorance. Stuff. Actually, you're the ignorant one. No, no, no. See, now you're just going back and forth with the, the, the name calling. I got to go anyways. All right. Just, bye, just, Bill. Just think about what you're doing. And then align more yourself. If you're a Christian, think about what Jesus said, because you're not doing it right now. You're doing the opposite. All right. Merry Christmas. That was interesting. 25 minutes with Bill. I guess I'm going to just skip the music. <laughs> Terrible. Matthew from Caught in the Middle is in Florida on the line. Matthew, how you doing, man? All right, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. Man, this guy that just called, right? He's a, <laughs> um, guy's kind of a mess. Yeah. Not, not even he, He's a real mess. It's not even kind of a mess. In what way? Oh, man. Like, where do we start? This guy, uh, I think he is attempting to be too intellectual for his own good. He uh, doesn't sound very educated, but he's trying to educate others without educating anyone at all. His uh, education comes in the form of questioning, never responding with anything except right. a question. Why is this? Oh, and then you give him a response. Well, why is this? And then you give him a response. And then you ask for a critique, and he asks another question. Yeah. So the conversation was going nowhere. Um, 
any, you know, this whole, uh, why is it important to keep white people around or <laughs> whatever? Because you, you can't, can't even respond to any sort of way that's going to appease that question for him whatsoever. Yeah. Um, uh, but, I mean, why is it just about white people? Why aren't we talking about black people? What was interesting is he got, he got on the line right after black trucker Josh in Georgia. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, he, he was reacting to Mark, maybe in California, who's, who's maybe would even call himself racist, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he says, well, how do you know white people built America? And you say... Well, I mean, they instructed it. Right. Well, why weren't they building railroads in China? They weren't building railroads in China. They didn't have the know-how. China was a, a third-world country at that point. You know, like, how do you know? Well, I mean, white people came here. They were here in vast majority. Uh, they were the people running things. They were the people designing things. Uh, America was the center of, of advancing technology at that point in time, the center of science. I mean, America was great. Yeah. At that point. I mean, it, it was great and growing. Right. Um, it remained great for a long time. I mean, if they weren't building railroads in China, and all the Chinese people wanted to come to America to be a laborer in America, I mean, the, the question answers itself. There's no, no real room for intellectual questioning Yeah. at that point. And, you know, I'm usually caught in the middle on things, but this is just a, a fact. I right. Mean, yeah. And it was, it's, I think the brainwashing is, is really deep in people where they think that disagreeing with interracial marriage or having, or saying that we shouldn't encourage it anyway. Cause I'm not saying we, that it's, I'm not even necessarily saying it's wrong. It looks, right. it looks off to me a little bit, oftentimes, most of the time. But, you know, I've been, I, I understand the attraction. And right. I've seen it in uh, friends and family and all kinds of things. But I'm just saying it shouldn't be encouraged, but it's pushed and promoted like crazy. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's like a Disney movie. Yeah. It's been going on for 10 years every day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a never-ending Disney movie. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, the people, people who cry ignorance, like... As, I don't know if you've heard my caller slash former guest, and I've been his, on his show, Asmodor. That man is not ignorant. He knows a lot of history, and he knows a lot of what's going on today. He's not ignorant. He could fact-check right. Joe from Phoenix quite well. Um, but So this, this whole thing about racism is ignorant. It's this uh, preferential preference for your own race is ignorant. It's I, not. I mean, what I, that's what that's I find funny normal. with that argument, <laughs> what I find funny when they make this argument is these are the same people that are not Christians. These are the same people that don't believe in, in most of the things in the Bible. And as you know, I, I don't either, but it doesn't mean I can't talk on it. Right. Uh, these people don't. Um, they're the first people to argue for evolution. Well, I mean, they need to explain to me why is it in Africa that the white rhinos hang out with the white rhinos yeah. and the black rhinos hang out with the black rhinos. And when they have interactions, what happens? They fight. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is nature at its best. According to them, this is their own evolution theory that yeah. they've made up. And then they, they wonder why, you know, there's any chaos and confusion of here in America or anywhere else in the world where people come in and attempt to destroy, you know, constitutions and, Everything else about it. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't need to look any further than, than Europe right now. Germany, you know, look at look at Germany. You know, they, they opened their borders up. They allowed all these people in. And I don't know the exact percentages. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But we know that uh, violent crime skyrocketed. We know that rape, uh, excuse my language, children, uh, <laughs> Went it skyrocketed. Yeah, you know all these these various things skyrocketed. And now their constitution is being changed. Um, they're losing rights at the probably the fastest rate ever right now, based off of kindness towards people that are, are not being healthy towards the country at all. Right. Uh, and we're we're seeing that same thing here. You know, 
I don't and they're, hear. And they're, whites are like the most seemingly welcoming of other people, fair towards other people. And when a white has a gripe, oftentimes it's a legitimate gripe. Sometimes it might be un- unfair or expressed in a nasty way. The, the people come down way hard on them. <laughs> and, way hard. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, especially in terms of fairness. You know, everybody wants to talk right. about fairness. Fairness, 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 except they're also willing to say that white people should not do the same things as these other people. And uh, that it's okay when the other people do it. Yeah. And, and I don't, there's, there's really no room for fairness in there. And, and then it goes into an intellectual argument about history. Well, history and genetic theory, you know, these people were oppressed. For so long, this is just part of their their vocabulary now. And it's, no, no, man. That's just ridiculous. You can't argue three different things at once. You know, you're giving me this whole evolution theory and that, you know, people of the same genitals should should, should function together and all this this, uh, racial mixing and all this stuff, except we can see that it's not working. It's it's right before us, you know, and I'm not saying not everyone, right? There are, are white people and people of color. They get married, have fruitful relationships, have fruitful marriages. Right. Everything turns out fine. No big deal. Who who really cares? No one's no one's out there bashing these people. Well, I mean there are, but those are ignorant people. Um I don't know, man. This this guy oh man, I was just <laughs> sitting back listening and I said, Man, this guy, uh He's, he's, he's quite the suit. The whole <laughs> spirit has changed. It was interesting. Oh, my goodness. I, I, don't, I don't know that he actually made any statements except you're calling me names that he's using against himself. I, I think that was literally the only statement he made during the entire conversation. Yeah. I think the rest of it was just questions. Right, it was... And then it was, it was the same question, you know? You'd hear a line of questioning, and then 10 minutes later, you're back at the same line of questioning. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's fine, interesting good. what what they jump to conclusions. The liberals jump to conclusions. Uh, it's like when Trump said um, about the people coming up from Mexico. They're, uh, they're not br- sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Oh, so he said all of them are racists, are, are rapists? No, he never said that. <laughs> never one. Yeah, but they, they, jumped to, they jumped to make a crazy assumption and then get mad about it. Right. But I don't, yeah, it was crazy. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, for about the first five minutes. I know. And then after that, it's just like, what are you doing, guy? Like, uh, <laughs> can we get somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Tower. Well, man, I just wanted to call in about that fella there. Thank that you, man. Was, uh, quite the, quite the character. I'll just say it like that. Well, Merry <laughs> Christmas to you. You celebrate Christmas? I do. My kids, my kids do. Nice. So, so we do. We got our tree up and all that good stuff, ornaments and a little bit of decorations. You know, all the ladies did all that stuff for themselves. But right we will on. be celebrating Christmas morning. And uh, having some good food. That's the best part. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm taking the whole week off between uh, Christmas and New Year's Day. From Christmas to New Year's Day. So uh, I'll be back a- after, f- after this Friday. I'll be back the Tuesday, the 2nd of January. And I'll be kind of out of town and doing, doing my thing. So I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Get her done. Hey, nice. And uh, have a good holiday, man. Enjoy your vacation. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon, hopefully. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Later. That was Matthew. Matthew with one T in Matthew. Caught in the middle. I've been on his channel at least a couple of times. And he's been on my show a couple of times. Uh, I'm going to just try to plow through the calls, guys. Appreciate you. And the super chats. i got to get to the super chats. We only have time for one song today. Man. Uh, oh, Holy Night. We'll play that one. Denny in Bulgaria is on the line. Denny, thanks for calling and holding. What is up? Good evening, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you. 
glad to hear. But it's, hey, I'm calling because of a few things that I'd like to highlight. You know how people often ask who built this and who built that and how did that happen and so on and so forth. Yeah. And uh, I believe I either called you or Mr. Peterson. I don't I don't remember. But I gave that example of the, the term that I... I mean, I use it because I have to, but I never really like it. It's called Slavic countries. Okay. And I often, I often say that there's no such thing as a Slavic country. Those don't exist because, but you know, you, we can use Russia and Bulgaria, for example. Uh -huh. So Russia is called Rus. That this, this is the Scandinavian Viking tribe. They went there and established a country, and the Bulgars were from Asia. They were part of the Hunnic tribe. And, and they, well, they went here and they established a country here. Yeah. Because establishing a country is remarkably difficult. It takes discipline. Yeah. It, it, you need a steady hand. And I don't want to insult people, but, you know, not everybody are able to do it. Simply, simply Look at that. Palestine. Look at the Palestinians. They're having a tough time establishing a country. And it, I They've would say... they a tough time establishing... In, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Please. In large part, it's because they lack discipline. Yes, that's correct, because they're not guess. only discipline, a lot of things are needed Yeah, in order for that. And if people still don't understand it, well, take it on a, on a lower level. Right now, I'm in, your, in my home. This is Danny's home. I, I didn't build it. I, 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 had a, I have a job. I get money. I, I had a bank loan. I purchased it, and I paid somebody to do the whole thing in there. Yeah, but this isn't somebody's home. It's Denny's home, and in all fairness, the bank wouldn't have given me the loan if I wasn't able to repay him. You know, it's simple as that. Right. So, just because the labor was made by someone doesn't mean that this is someone's home. This is why you know, let's, let's say uh, John. Okay, let's use that name. Uh, an architect that designs a building named John, and this is John's building, right? Okay, obviously John didn't build it all by himself, right? but he designed it. He did the planning. He did everything. Yeah. And yes, there were people who were involved in that project, but this isn't their project. This is John's project because he designed it and he paid for it as an architect and everything and so on and so forth. It's, it's really simple, and I am, truth be told, shocked that in today's age, people still don't understand basic terminologies. It's, it's ridiculously difficult to, you know, to build your own home today. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention building a whole building or making a country or keeping it running. Yeah. Those are difficult things. This isn't something that happens by accident. The very fact that, you know, you go to the, to the bathroom and you, once you're done, you flush it and you go somewhere. You know, it doesn't disappear magically. Somebody created and designed the plumbing system and also is maintaining it. You know, this, this whole, and I'm using this example just as, as a basic example, but people are taking a lot of things for granted. And Mr. Hake, this is, should be told, shameful. And again, I did not call to, you know, to get you in trouble. I have utmost respect for your network and for you. I'm just highlighting things that about 10 years ago were pretty obvious. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a great point, man. Um, about building a country. That's so true. Yeah. And, and not only building it, there are a lot of countries that were built and lost. I know a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, but, but truth be told, you, know, you also have to maintain it. My father used to say, because, uh, you know, I was, and every, well, not every, I guess, but as most young people, when I was young, I was always complaining. I was a terrible person. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I was complaining a lot. Yeah. And my father said, well, son, should be told, a place is only as good as the people that live there. And the fact that this place isn't fine is because of people like you. Yeah. I love you, of course, as a father, but if I'm an employer, an employer, I would never hire you because, well, you're, you'll do more harm than good because you're not okay. And if he was honest with me, I appreciate that. And actually, those words did a lot of impact on me. I, I got better. So he was right about that. The place is only as good as the people that live there. 
and, and this, this goes for a city, for a town, for a village, for a company, for everything. So some people don't want to make things better. They just hate the way things are now because they're miserable. And right. they want other people to be miserable as well. That's so true, man. Misery well, spreads, loves spreading misery, too. Yeah. There was, I think, last one or, or the Christmas before that one, I I had a guest, a man who I, was, I am still, you know, a good friend with. Uh-huh. And uh, normally I don't complain. In general, I, I don't complain. If I have a problem, I'm either resolving it or simply ignoring it until it gets resolved. That's how I am. Uh, but... He always complains about everything. One, one time he said, well, things are going well with you and, and my life isn't well. I said, you, you don't know that. I'm just, you know, not telling you anything. <laughs> nice. In general, I, I'm not going to tell you. Right. And, and I decided to share a few details from my life with him. Normally I do, but I've known him for about 20 years. Uh, and I said a few things. And, and this is a man who is a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time ago. While I was explaining my problem, I could have seen in his eyes that he was actually happy that I had a problem. That's funny. And it, <laughs> yes, it is. And in you know, all fairness, I understand that it wasn't him being happy and the devil in him. Yeah. Was, but still, the fact that you can actually enjoy the, that feeling that you're not the only one miserable and a friend of yours is miserable and that makes you happy, well, yeah, that's an issue. Yeah, that so, is an issue. <laughs> and that's that's what the world does. You're not alone. You're not alone in in your misery. Everybody goes through this. That's not a true comfort. <laughs> no. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be the comforter. Not everybody else commiserating. Absolutely. But yeah. then again, it's not for everybody. Right. But again, I I have utmost respect for you. I did not go to, you know, to insult people. Right. But it's not for everybody. It simply isn't. Yeah. So if they want to be miserable, let them be miserable, wish them well. And uh, with that said, Mr. Hake, I know how busy you are and everything. Sir, thank you for taking my call. Kind regards to your uh, colleagues and your audience. Have a remarkable Christmas, and God be with you, sir. Thank you, Denny in Bulgaria. Merry Christmas to you as well. Take care. Likewise. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Nice. Nice. Ronnie in Ohio is on the line. What's up, Ronnie? Thank you for calling and holding. Go for it. My guy, hey, how you doing today? Doing well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to, I guess, touch real quick on Mark. Uh, I'm hoping that you can ask him one time when he calls uh, why he prefers these. Oh, you cut out there, Ronnie. You suddenly went silent. I wonder if you press mute or if you just went silent. Ronnie in Ohio, are you there? You, you, you cut uh, out for several seconds there. You wanted oh, shoot, to, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, you wanted to ask Mark why he what? Why he prefers the Civil War period over the War of 1812. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how he would You're a history answer that buff. and connect those dots. Okay. You're a Me, history yeah, buff. I love history. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I love history. I don't um, even know what the War of 1812 was about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let Mark explain it. But Sounds it was, um, yeah, it was really the United States fighting against the coalition of uh, England or Britain and then um, France. And then Spain got involved, wow. and then they were also, and then they also had Native Americans fighting on their side as well. And that it took all took um, place on American soil, huh? Yes. Um, Slash and then Mexican there were, you know, yep. And then you had the United States Army that also had um, allies that were Native Americans. So it was Native Americans fighting on both sides of that war, and then uh, the opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Wow. By Native yeah. Americans, you obviously mean American Indians. You don't mean white Anglo-Americans who are native to this land. Born here. <laughs> yeah, I think people would Yeah, people would know what I'm talking about. I'm <laughs> yeah. talking Cherokee. I, know. I, I'm I, talking. I always like to jump on that because I'm grammatically correct. <laughs> but yeah, the Cherokee, <laughs> the Cherokee, etc. Not politically correct. Cherokee, Seminole, yep. The ones that were, uh, I guess, 
uh, 20 years after that war up until about 15, 10 years before the Civil War, the, uh, the Trail of Tears. Wow. You familiar with the Trail of Tears? I've heard of it. I know a little bit about it. Uh, I've heard the story a number of times, but I don't remember hardly a lick of it. But they, I actually yeah. got a, a, a patchy tear when I was at Indian Village in the Christian family camp forest home over in the uh, Angeles Forest over here. <laughs> Mm. An Apache yeah. tear, and it's just a rock. It's a smooth, brownish, awesome-looking little rock. Apache tear. But anyway. Yeah, yeah that's pretty neat. Yeah, I liked it. Um, yeah, but I, I did want to... I've, I've heard you talk about it yesterday, again today. Uh, your adoration of the rebel flag, as you put it. Yeah. Uh, Where did that come from? I have always kind of liked it ever since I was a kid. And I think that was probably Dukes of Hazard, basically. So I think it looks cool. I'm showing a piece of it. It's the the cross or the X with the blue and the white stars on the inside and the uh, red around it. Um, so I've always liked the look of it. I always thought, oh, this is American. And I know that it's Southern and it's the Confederate. It represents, you know, the Confederacy on some level. And... I noticed that there was this bias against southern southerners, white southerners in like mainstream like Saturday night live type people, liberal, the liberal media, you know. I was in college when I noticed it really bad cuz they were mock the southern accent of like George W. Bush, you know, cuz he had a Texas accent, I guess, or something. Yeah. And so it, I noticed that Everybody else, you can't make fun of them, but you can make fun of the white Southerners. And so this, I noticed it get worse and worse and worse and worse. This uh, sort of anti-white, anti-Southern, oh, the South is racist. And I only ever knew the South to be decent. I get that there's, you know, some pretty tough-minded people in the South. By tough-minded, you could call them racist, I guess. But by and large, they're like decent people, and even the so-called racists, they, they themselves may be by and large pretty decent when, it, when push comes to shove, when you uh, talk with them, even if as a colored person or whatever. So I, it felt like there's an attack on Christians, whites, the South, America. So I, that's why I gravitate towards the flag. And it's also, I'm kind of an anti-trendy person. If something becomes trendy, I'm leery of it. And I, yeah. I sometimes sort of rebel and go the opposite way, which is not, that's sort of an ego thing. That's an ego thing, I admit. Yeah, so that's, I remember that the sums biblical up. question that said, uh, why do you choose sides? Right, yep. Exactly. So, so but that sums up my, uh, my support for okay. the rebel flag. There, so you you have you have sympathy for the racist white Southerners and think that they need somebody to help cape for them by standing up for a flag that they had at one time. Yeah, I think that's a. I wouldn't word it that way, but I think that's a <laughs> fair thing to say. Yes, that's amazing, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, and you th you you think it's an American flag? Yeah, it is American. Isn't isn't the rebel spirit the independence the the s s the spirit of independence and the f and freedoms, even including even if you can quibble about the, whether the right to own a slave is a freedom that we should have, but isn't that spirit kind of a American spirit? <laughs> and no, okay, no. but how about this? The spirit of unity. Uh, wouldn't the spirit of unity make you not be antagonistic toward the Southerners who who cherish this flag? Their entire premise was based on not being united. Was, but how about now? Like, uh, we fought the war to keep united. How about now? Like, we're, wouldn't you, wouldn't the, you, as an Amer a fellow American, want to be gracious toward your fellow American who may have a flag that you think is a little antagonistic towards America, but you don't want to be antagonistic back at them? To me, I'm I'm welcoming of. Most people, as long as you're not harmful and not hurting anybody else, nice. I'm, I'm pretty open to at least having a conversation. So if right somebody on. had a flag, yeah, if somebody had a flag of some some people that have never won a war, 
uh-huh. and it's a country, I would I would still kind of ask those questions on why do you admire this flag? Yeah. Um, because nine times out of ten, they say it's because they admire those people and they agree with those thought processes. Yeah. There so is something, look isn't there when, some stuff to admire about the Confederates and the, the arguments that they made? If you and I sat down and, and went through their, we could just look at the platform that they had in 1860 and yeah. then again in 1864, because those were their, their platforms okay. when they were running as president uh, during that time. Look and see what they were thinking and what they were fighting for, and then we would have to see if you agreed or disagree with the things that they were saying. But you know... Uh, was there anything about them that you admired? And, and look at the people, too, like Lee and uh, others. What is to admire about Robert E. Lee or Stonewall Jackson? or What's, what's to admire about any of them? Um, Let's start with Lee. What's, what's admirable about Lee? He sounded like he was an honorable man who knew when to fight and, uh, and knew when to quit. We can give him that. And he works. Does that any, mean any any? Does that mean he gets a, a? Why would why would that be deserving of a statue? And he was because he he knew when to fight the war and when to when to surrender. He he was as Daniel from Texas said. He was the heart of the South. He uh, or of the Confederacy, I guess, is what he said. So he, he was the heart. I wouldn't if if he was the heart. Uh-huh. Then he should have been president and not Jefferson Davis. Then he shouldn't have been at the front no, no, no. Of the I'm, war. But in practice, the president is not not always the heart. Like I would not call Biden the heart of America. I would, would call you Trump. Say that about I think Trump, Trump five years ago. I would say that about Trump today. He's the heart of the real American people. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. <laughs> What's Trump that? Is, Trump is the, I said, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. If if Trump is the, the heart, it's going to be a heart attack. That's a, uh allusion to Red Fox. Okay. <laughs> Funny, man. You, you might not ever watch this. Yeah. He had a heart attack on almost Red every Fox. episode. I think I saw him in uh, Harlem Nights. Was he in Harlem Nights, that movie with... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> he was funny. Yeah, he was, he was cool. in there. Yeah, definitely a legend. Now, there should be, there could, if somebody had a statue of Red Fox, I would be okay with that because I understand his place in history. Oh, but and he, why was a, he would be deserving of a statue. But I still don't know what why was, Robert E. Lee accomplished. Oh, Go I mean, ahead. he was in, he was a, I heard that he was a great general. He uh, was an honorable man and stuff like that. Yeah, that doesn't mean that you get a statue. But it doesn't mean that you should have it taken down. And I don't think that they're taking it down because he was a, a general and uh, no, I know, uh, but but so-called honorable man. They're they're taking it down for things that he said and things that he did, also while he was alive. Do you agree with them taking it down? Uh, I really don't care either way. I don't think taking it down is erasing history. So if that's their goal, they fail. And if the people that are opposing the statue coming down, if they're afraid that people are going to all of a sudden forget who Robert E. Lee was, uh, they shouldn't be worried. He's, he's got his place in history. It is. Right or wrong. Uh, history is not entirely honest, let's say. Uh, yeah. I would a, say. But, you, you can't spell history without story. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm chuckling at the chat. Uh, oh, what they in there saying? Oh, there was somebody. Somebody on people on D Live are doing shenanigans that I disavow. I won't go further than that. Um, I say that this is uh, antagonistic. It's appeasing emotions, and when you appease emotions, which are based on wrong things anyway, a false judgment of like, oh, you're so. I'm not t- directing this at you, I'm directing this at others. You're so brave mm-hmm. condemning people who've been long dead with your moral, moral high horse, you know? That's my take on these people who are so big on taking these confederates down and condemning slavery. Slavery was over like 150 years ago, roughly, and at least the way that we knew it back then, right? We know of it from back then. And you're so tough to condemn slavery, you're... Uh, immoral person, I'm talking about these people who are h- up on their high horse, 
you're the mm. m- you're more immoral than the slave owners, or you're every bit as immoral, you know. And t- it's it's communism, man. It's communism. It's divide. It's uh, appease the emotions and the, the false anger of Black am- Americans and the uh, false misguided judgment against the uh, the white Americans today and yesterday. Um, mm. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you, yeah, you said a mouthful. Yeah, um, I would, I would push back on uh, choosing either side in that debate on whether the flag is good, whether it's bad, whether those statues should stay, or whether they should come down. There are good people and bad people on both sides of that argument, so I would caution against choosing sides in that. That's fair. Um, I, uh, you can, you can, like Jesus, Jesus agreed with the Pharisees that there is resurrection from the dead rather than the Sadducees who said that there is not. Um, but he was not on the side of the Pharisees. So he didn't hook his wagon to the Pharisees. In fact, the Pharisees by and large hated him. Exceptions yep, to the that's rule. That's why they would, they, they, yep, they plotted to go kill him. So he, I can, he healed somebody so and they I plotted should, to go kill him. I should agree with what's right but not be taking the side of these people. So I agree with you on that. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not even saying take the flag down or get rid of the sticker or anything. That I just good. wanted to uh, at least have that open dialogue and ask those questions about uh, where your adoration for it comes from and, and why you're rooted in it because I've I've seen it. I've had issues and, and arguments with people and tried to have conversations with them that hit me with the whole the South will rise again. And I yeah. say, well, what does that mean? And they I just don't... look at me and smile and laugh, and I'm like, yeah, you, you're trying to intimidate me. You're trying to be evil, um, but you know, you either go have to come just, back to me when you're hood saying, doing, or we can have a real conversation. It's a saying. It's kind of like saying America's going to come back. And JLP, I think, is right when he says America's not coming back. It's it's just long gone. It's it's communist subverted. Mm-hmm. What about? I mean, wh- last quick question. Um, mm-hmm. Do you respect the the people who? The black and, and white Americans, mostly white, uh, of the South, who value it as their heritage. It depends on their logic behind it, and th- and that's why I would, it would have to require a type of conversation that that kind of like we're having now, where I can ask them like, okay, I, I see you 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 like the flag, you might love the flag, why? And if they say something like, well, the South really won the war, or the South should have won the war, and if people wanted to enslave people, they should be allowed to. And I want to go push for legislation to do it. Like if they say things like that, then I'm not okay with it. Has anybody uh, told you that they should, other than me, that slavery should be allowed again? Yeah, and 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 I don't think that they said. Have those people been? Have those been? I think you do. Have those people been rich enough to own slaves? Because I don't think I'm rich enough to own a slave, (laughs) or (laughs) responsible enough. I can't even own a pet. (laughs) There you go. Yep. Uh, so no, like it, it again. It didn't scare it's me just to fantasy. the point. It didn't scare me at all. Yeah, and I'm and I'm, I was never concerned about them running for Congress or running for office to actually implement those ideas. I'm like, yeah. and they and they're also not in a position of power. Uh, it's almost like they're angry that their yeah, white privilege didn't they, pan out for them. That's what and I'm that, talking that's, about. That's why they mad at me. That's what I'm talking about. Like these these Southerners who who love the flag, they're the most. If you will, I'm going to steal a term from the liberals, marginalized people who have no power. And every time they get a little power, they're taken out. Even the ones who, who speak something along the lines of, of for the whites, like uh, Congressman Steve King of Iowa. He said Western civilization, and he was misquoted by the New York Times about white supremacy or something like that. And all the rhinos voted him out. They, they primaried him. And so, like, the, you're right, these people have no power, and the liberals, the liberal media are punching down, if you will, to steal another term from the liberals, punching down at the, uh, at the poor little whites who like their white, fellow whites. <laughs> yeah, yep, I, I, I see that, and yeah. I also see the other side of the coin where you got the right-wing media pushing down on black people that don't have much power. Okay. All right, man. Man, interesting yeah, so call. They, yeah, they both exist. Yeah, they both exist. They're trying to drive us apart, but, you know, conversations like this, and hopefully people can start talking more and, and fighting less and shooting less. Yeah, and talk is not enough. 
you have to have like a changed heart of love and understanding. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen without many conversations. Like it's, it's hard to change your opinion about a group of people. If you don't converse with that group of people or anybody from that group of people. Yeah, I guess so. But you can, but, uh, it is, it is a natural thing. If you are a, a Christian, it's a natural thing. I think if you are a decent person to treat people decently, even if you disagree and, under, and don't understand them or ever talk to them. Yep. A hundred percent. And and I'm that type of person that says, even if somebody says a things that I disagree with and they're wrong, it might be hateful. I think they should still have the right to say it. Should people not purchase things from their stores or should they boycott their uh, speeches or whatever? That should be perfectly fine. But I think people should be allowed to say what they think, even if it's dumb and racist. Yeah, true, man. Well, thank you, Ronnie in Ohio. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. We'll we'll talk again, hopefully. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll talk to you soon. Nice. All right. Sal in Arizona is on the line. What's up, Sal? Nice to hear from you. <laughs> Hola. Hello. Hey. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Um, I just wanted to call really quickly because somebody... I was fighting with my mom and my brother the other day during breakfast <laughs> about the Trail of Tears. Oh, wow. Not fighting... Not fighting, but a little, it's just a little comment. I was watching a documentary, a liberal, most documentaries are liberal, on YouTube the other day. And it was the, like, biography or whatever about um, Andrew Jackson, the president that actually put in motion the trail of tears. Okay, and he was a great president, I heard. He was amazing. He was amazing. Okay, so this is actually what happened. Nobody's going to tell you this. And obviously the liberal, liberal documentary was like, you know, Andrew Jackson was so horrible for doing this. But in my mind, I'm like, no, that makes perfect sense. So since Andrew <laughs> Jackson was a young soldier, because he was in the military for decades and decades, he was an expert. Anyway, um, his family was raped and murdered by Native Americans, by Indians that were living next to each other. So what the white, civilized white people did or tried to do was say, okay, the Indians are here. Let's live peacefully next to each other. You over there with your, you know, teepees and family and us over here with our awesome superior beds <laughs> and bed and houses. Yeah. And let's try to, <laughs> let's try to live together in peace. Okay. That didn't work because the Native Americans, the Indians, were used to kidnapping women and raping them and stealing horses and all of that. That was normal. Wow. So, yes. So, Andrew Jackson. They didn't believe in private property, a, some of them. No, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, so, Andrew Jackson was one of the, one of the soldiers that hit back. So, a group of Indians attacked his little town where he was or whatever, killed his family. So he went back and obviously it was like a knife for a knife. So he killed their women and children and, and burned their their teepees. Yes. So it was like, you do this to me, I'm going to do this to you and even worse, right? So it had been decades where they were not, it was a lie. They were not living peacefully next to each other. It was not working out. So when he finally became president, he had already seen it. You know, people call him, oh, he's a racist or blah, blah. He had already seen that this living together in peace would never work out because it hadn't worked out before. Yeah, that's so interesting. Were those Apaches that uh, he was fighting with or was it a different tribe? Do you know? Do you remember? I I don't remember. All Indians look the same. Just like, you know. <laughs> <That's> so, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but that is such an interesting story. And I, I of course, disavow that, that level of revenge, I guess, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but, but they say cops are racist. Cops are the ones dealing with these criminals. They are the ones who see exactly. it rea- really. We're mm-hmm. the ignorant ones. We're the ones judging them, the laymen judging them from our comfortable places, dealing with our comfortable uppity fellow POC, P- POCs who are, are nicey-nice, and they're the ones dealing right. with the rougher crowd <laughs> that are the rougher POC crowd. And so they say cops are racist? No, they're realistic. Same thing with uh, Andrew Jackson, it sounds like. Yes, and they see the repercussions of the choices that the government or society made. 
So I do think that he should have waited till after winter. <laughs> I thought I do think that was a little heartless. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, it was winter, and he forced all the women, children, and Indians, men, to walk through swamps, freezing swamps, wow. marshes. I mean, mountains. Yeah, it was bad. Okay, maybe that. I'll give him that. That was kind of brutal. Uh-huh. But um, it was brutal yeah, times, that, though. Interesting. Exactly. Thanks so much for the exactly. call and the history lesson, C. Sal. I got to cut it short because I'm yes, over yes. time. But uh, you know what? I think I will play the ending song because I'm getting past. C. Sal in Arizona, Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for the history <laughs> lesson. I'm sure that there were Thanks. nice Indians. I heard when, when I was growing up, there were some who were peaceful and some who were warlike and evil. Right. right. Great, great right. call. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hank. All Merry right. Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Man, Frederick in Los Angeles, California was on hold. Um, William in California was on hold forever. I cannot get to you guys. And the super chats, there were a whole ton of super chats. I'm going to have to read those tomorrow. I'm going to have to actually play, I'm going to have to play actually Oh Holy Night tomorrow. Because that's too long of a song. So enjoy Sufjan Stevens, the softy. You know, we're softies today. Once in David's royal city from Songs for Christmas. Adios, America. And catch American Anchor Baby at noon Pacific time. Ladies, Women's Forum, uh, tomorrow night. Bye. Oh, yeah. So nice. Read your supers tomorrow. Shout out to truck driver, someone, Base America First, Carver, TJ, Lily Poo. Thank you for the support, guys. I'll read your supers tomorrow. Oh, and one from Kofi, the zesty one. But a Kofi, Kofi. <laughs> our eyes at last shall see him through his own. It's Christian. For that child, so dear and gentle, is our Lord in heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he is gone. This is good. Sufjan Stevens, everybody. Neon Nativity, according to Spoiler Alert. Shout out to Spoiler Alert. <laughs> I don't care what Raymond Eleven says about you, man. You're all right in my book. <laughs> Hassan likes it. Thank you, Hassan.
San Onofre State Beach, down near San Clemente. Adios, America. Bye.